Hello and welcome to the Transformation Manager blog. Today we're going to be looking at error handling, so let's begin. As we can see from last time, again we're still in the turbine blaze to turbine cost. We had logged some information out for every cost that we were coming through to see which costs were processed. And we'd also set up a procedure to standardize our currency instead of the original work we did, which was to create a lookup, which actually looked up against our target database. The standardized procedure just looked up against our source input file. So it's two different ways of doing it, depending whether you, you know your source input files contain the standards or whether your target database contained that standards file or even another database contains that standards table. So for now, we'll stick with our procedure as that's what we have currently active. And what we'll do now is look at ways in which we can actually enhance this. So whether we're already logging information out to the log, what happens if we want to report errors? Well, if we have a look over here on our project side, you can see that we have the models defined. You can see that we have the transforms defined. And we also have the option to put bring in error handlers. And what this allows us to do within TM is actually write out our errors in any form that we wish. So we can write them out to flat file, to XML, to Excel, to another database, and however we wish to write them out. So we can actually perform transforms on the errors prior to writing them out in the form that we wish. So let's have a look at an example of how we do that. So if we look, we're logging information out here. We haven't got too much in here. We've got a standardized currency. So in this case, what we'll do is look in our standardized currency for a place to add our error message. So here in the else, rather than the log info, we could actually use another inbuilt function, note error. And you can see from those tooltips that we had a reason and then we add the context info. So firstly, let's give it a reason. So directly setting currency as no standard found. And it may be we can pass in that currency as a value. You notice it's slightly different to what we did with the log info there. And again, I can just comment that line out if I want for now. But you can see there we were saying about the blade and we passed it out to the alt file. Evidently we don't do that because that was just for the logging. But I've done it slightly different in terms of here I'm reporting the currency. And what I'll show you is when we're back in the main transform how we can report other bits and pieces out also to that same error. So firstly, let's take that log line out now. And again, control S will save our procedure. So for now, that's all we need to do. We've now swapped that from, instead of logging it to the logs, we will note the error and that will get reported out in our error handler, which we will create shortly. So if we swap back to the turbine blade to turbine cost, so what we can do now is add our catch error block in order to catch those note errors that are gonna come out of our procedure in this case. So to do that, again, we can start to type, we can get our catch error, and there we can see, so it's going to $TM error, which is, um, you can see there is an element, and this holds all the errors that are being built up throughout the transforms, and as we said, this will allow us then to write those out separately to XML, Excel, flat files or databases as the project completes. So what we're going to do here, again, is simply write out, as we were saying earlier, in the actual standardized currency, then we passed in the, the currency value, and we passed that into context info one. So we're going to pass some information into context info two, in this case, which is the blade ID. Now you can see we still have a little red error there saying the relationship TM error is not valid. And that's because we need on our target to add a new TM error relationship. And we can click there. You can see the TM error relationship added. If I make a little bit of room, there we can see the contents of the TM error. We 
can see the error is now being removed and that's good to go. If we press Control S, that'll save that for us. And now what that means is those errors are being caught. So what do we do with those errors? Well, what we need to do is create a new project, which will be our error handler project. So again, I right click in the project pane, new project, we can even call it error project, whatever we want to call it. And the key thing here is that we're starting with our TM error. Now on our target side, again, we have the models we've already loaded in, but what we want to do is load in a new model to report our errors to. In this case, I'm quite simply going to have a flat file, and this will be our error model. And we'll add an element, so it'll be our sample flat file. So we can see we have an error text that we can use. It's just delimited. It's comma delimited. First row contains the names. So first line of data is line two. If we hit next, infer the model, you can see it's a very simple. Um, we've got the error description and the first, then a value one and then a value two. And that's all there is to the output file that we're actually going to write out in this case for this example. We can evidently get far more complicated than that. And it, again, it could be a database, XML, or anything else. But for now, we'll stick with a, a fairly simple flat file. We'll give it a name. So this element will be called error file. And we'll hit finish. So what we now have is our error model, which we can select. Click OK, and now we have our error project ready to go. If we expand it, we can see the models there. Transforms, we right click, new transform. Source element will be the TM error, target will be the error file. We'll click OK. And what we're going to do, we'll take the detail message to the error detail. We'll take the context info to value 1 and info2 to, to value2. Two. So we know that we wrote the message, the error description. We put some information in context info1, which is the currency. We put some information in context info2, which was our blade ID. So we're just going to write those bits of that TM error out to our flat file. And again, at this point, I can just save that. Click the little hammer to build it. There we go, build successful. So we're all good. And for now, what I can do is actually just minimize all that down. We can close that one, close the standardized currency, just to get us back to this one. And if we have a look, error handlers, I can right click on there and do add. You can see now we have the option of adding our error project. So I can select that. So now we've linked it all together. So we're actually now in a very good position. So anywhere where we're noting errors or any other kind of errors that are coming out, we will catch them in here. They will then get held and reported out using our error project, in this case to our error model, which is our flat file in this case. So again, we can build this. And you can see it's not only building the blog project, it's built our error project as well launch the migrator and what we can see we've got the standard arrangement as before but on the target side now we actually have another tab for our error project and what we're going to do is pass in a url for our error file So in here we can just call it error dot text. And there we go. That's all configured. So we hit run. Our project will run. And straight away we can also see that we've got elements written to our error file. 
and we can see we've got our usual elements written out to our aeroplane and our various other tables on our engine database side. So we can have a look and see exactly what we've got out in our errors. So I click on here. So again we can see the logs. So this time in our alt log you can see we've only got one line which is the one where that lookup was correct. So for those other three now, what it's going to do is actually write out to our error file. So if I open up the output directory, and again, if we have a look in there, so now in our file, which we're writing out to, you can see that we're directly setting the currency. You can see we pass in the currencies that we're directly setting and we also pass in the blade ID. So there's a different way of doing it, of reporting out those errors. You can see they're all being written out, in this case to a flat file as we said, but there are other alternatives in terms of what we write them out to. So you can see it's very easy to configure, it's quite quick to put it all together and be able to report out in a number of different forms, different formats. So in this case we're logging to the flat files and we're writing the errors to flat files, they could be written out to database and other things as well. Well thanks very much for watching, that concludes our blog for today on error handling and hopefully we'll see you again soon.